Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Margie Martin, Dean of the Chicago campus, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our virtual celebration of the class of 2021. President Nealon, I'm honored to announce that the members of the Applied Behavior Analysis and Dual Enrollment, MA Counseling Psychology, and MSABA graduating classes, friends, family, and faculty are now present. All are gathered here to celebrate the class of 2021. Before we begin, I have a few Zoom housekeeping notes. First students, if you can't share your camera, make sure that you put in the text uh, there that you can't do that. We'll make sure that we can uh, raise you to a panelist so you'll be able to share your camera when the time is right. Guests will remain muted for the duration of the ceremony to reduce background noise but please feel free to post comments in the chat box. I see many of you are doing that already, but remember everyone can see them. And to reduce that background and feedback noise, we wanna remind you that if you have two multiple or multiple devices, such as a phone and a computer, make sure both are muted or not in the same room. And if you're having any technical difficulties during the celebration, please use the IT contact information posted in the chat box. And you might wanna jot that down in case you're disconnected for any reason. Each graduate will be spotlighted as their name is called. So please, when that time comes, turn your camera on. We wanna be able to celebrate with you. The celebration will be recorded and posted on our website. Graduates, we will email you a link just as soon as that recording is posted. And you're all invited to share these memories with your friends and family on social media today. Use the hashtag TCSPPGRAD, G-R-A-D. So we are so delighted that families and friends of our graduates have joined us from around the world to celebrate this important day. Welcome and thank you. And now I will introduce Dr. Michelle Nealon, president of the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. Thank you, Dr. Martin. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to be here for our virtual celebration of the Chicago Campus Class of 2021. For our graduates, this event is the culmination of several years of study. For the families of our graduates, this event is the manifestation of all of your hopes and dreams. And for the faculty who toiled along with our graduates, this event is a moment of immense pride for you too, pride in your accomplishments. This is indeed a wonderful occasion, a time to celebrate, a time to reflect, a time to prepare. Today, advice will be given and stories will be told. There will be laughter and tears and applause. And yes, there may even be a few technical difficulties. Above all though, it will be a memorable time together. And now I would like to introduce your department chair, the wonderful Dr. Ashley Whittington Barnish. Thank you, President Milan. Class of 2021, seeing you gathered here today is one of my favorite moments as a department chair. I wanna recognize all your hard work in classes, at practicum, and on your thesis or applied project. Some of you needed to change your protocols to be able to finish data collection remotely or defended your thesis via Zoom when that was not what you originally expected at all. You completed all of these rigorous requirements during unprecedented times Today we are here to celebrate your achievement. Not only did you learn to provide ABA services in traditional settings, you also had to quickly master to provide services via telehealth. I know you will take the skills you've learned in ABA as well as counseling psychology for those of you in the dual enrollment to make a difference. Now it's your time to go out and use the science of behavior analysis to uphold our pillars of education, innovation, diversity, and service to our communities. The world needs you now more than ever. It is now my pleasure to introduce our faculty speaker, Dr. John Eshelman. Hello, everybody. I hope I'm unmuted. Uh, <laughs> let me know if you can't hear me. Um, I'm John Eshelman, for anyone who doesn't know, and I was uh, honored to uh, agree to talk to you today and happy to be able to attend the graduation and get a chance to speak to you for a few minutes. So first of all, I want to just say congratulations on finishing up your master's degree. Yay. And I mean, that's really, truly remarkable accomplishment. And 
now you'll be eligible to go on for your BCBA certification. So it, it kind of never ends in some ways. Um, but congratulations nonetheless. So I want to take just a couple of minutes uh, that I've been given here to uh, talk to you uh, kind of one last time. Uh, there are at least three things that I'd like to kind of leave you with, could you think about as you go forward with your degree in hand. Uh, so this is kind of, my, kind of like my last lecture, but it only lasts a couple of minutes. So <laughs> not like some of them did in the past. First, care enough to chart. Okay, the ABA program and department at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology was co-founded by Dr. Chuck Mervitz. And most of you did not have a chance to meet Dr. Mervitz, but uh, he was the one who hired me to uh, be on the faculty at the school. And Chuck had a lot of things to contribute uh, to the world. And uh, when students or graduates come back to Dr. Mervitz, uh, especially graduates that you know, come back after two or three years of being out in the, in the real world, so to speak, and they come back with a behavior problem or issue that they couldn't figure out, uh, Chuck would always say, put it on a chart. And that's this, some of you have seen before. Okay, so Chuck meant the standard acceleration chart. That's my advice too, okay? So if you run into a problem, and no one else can solve it, before you ask the A team for advice, put it on a chart. It'll probably help you solve the problem. Second, just to get you something to think about as we go forward, um, probably something I never really covered because I only found out about this within the last uh, seven or eight months, is that back in the mid 1960s, behaviorists were planning on adding an applied journal. And we all know that the journal that they developed was JABA, the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis. But JABA as a name for the journal won out by only one vote. Okay, that's kind of incredible. Dr. Og Lindsley and others had suggested the Journal of the Experimental Synthesis of Behavior. Synthesis, not analysis. So in Bloom's Taxonomy of Educational Objectives, some of you may be familiar with that, synthesis, a little bit higher up, uh, and includes analysis, but also goes beyond analysis. So I encourage you to explore maybe more synthesis of behavior, and not just kind of remain down in, in analysis. Shaping behavior, for example, is, is one example of synthesis. And I think that's where, you know, if you really want to help move the field forward, that that's one area that uh, you can certainly think about. Third, also near and dear to me, is the, this issue of philosophical doubt. So that was probably covered in several of your classes and uh, it'll be on the BCBA exam probably, at least one question, but it's really hard to do and sometimes scary, okay? But my advice is be skeptical of claims, especially about behavior, behavior changing methods and so forth, and be willing to do your own research to verify something. I encourage you to work on embracing philosophical doubt. No, it's hard. So in closing and going forward, um, I encourage you to put behavior on the chart, advance the field if you want to by looking into synthesis of behavior and keep in mind philosophical doubt, but mainly uh, be ethical, have integrity and go out there and do right by your clients and help our science and improve society. So thank you for giving me a chance to uh, talk to you one more time today. Thank you, Dr. Eshelman. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Kaylee Rostin, representing the MS Applied Behavior Analysis class of 2021. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you all for everyone who is able to log in and be a part of this day. And congratulations to everyone here who is graduating today. This field requires that we as practitioners expect the unexpected in our jobs. Not only has this prepared us to take this next step in our careers, but also for the unexpected year we all experienced. That year only emphasizes the amount of strength and perseverance everyone demonstrated by making it here today. Each person here has dedicated any spare time they had to enhancing their knowledge in this field from rereading the paragraph for the fifth time, trying to figure out what in the world Skinner was babbling about, 
or completing a staff meds timing in between sessions with clients or memorizing the Cooper book glossary for an exam. No matter your EO for completing this program, take the time today to celebrate your achievements. We were lucky enough to start our graduate school journey in person, even if it was only for one and a half semesters. Here, we were able to meet and learn from others with different personalities, cultures, and life experiences, and were able to come together and support one another. Everyone's unique learning histories has contributed to the type of practitioner you will be. Some may work with children or adults. Some may even want to do some research with pigeons in the future. No matter what you choose to pursue with this degree, I am confident everyone will be strong practitioners, leading with patience, empathy, determination, and flexibility. Our time here at TCS not only prepared us to sit for an exam, but also to how to apply our skills, work with our peers, and helped us build a community. Thank you to all the faculty and staff whose dedication to expanding and developing this field is displayed through the support, encouragement, and mentorship given to each of us students throughout the course of our time here. Our learning does not stop here. The skills we have learned in this program will continue to enhance the work we do and promote lifelong learning that will only better serve our communities. Now it is time for us to bring our skills into the real world um, with the work that we do and see firsthand how an FR1 is not forever. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you. I'm excited to see where we will all end up in the future. I would also like to thank my friends and my family, especially my mom who continues to support me through all that I do. I hope everyone is finding their own way to celebrate themselves and their success today. Thank you. Bear with me for one second, please. <laughs> Greetings, graduates and invited guests. It is my great pleasure to introduce our honored speaker today, Mr. Raul Raimundo. Mr. Raimundo has long understood the challenges and strengths of working class and immigrant families. After earning his bachelor's degree from Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota, he returned to the Chicago neighborhood where he grew up and co-founded the Resurrection Project in 1990 with seed capital of $30,000 from six Chicago area parishes. Since its inception, the Resurrection Project has leveraged this capital into over $600 million in community investment and positively impacted thousands of individuals in Southwest side Latino city neighborhoods and in the Western suburbs. Under Mr. Raimundo's leadership as CEO, the Resurrection Project seamlessly blends community development, community organizing, human service delivery, and advocacy to build healthier and engaged communities. And today is one of the region's most innovative and effective community development organizations working in every area of community life. Mr. Ramundo currently serves on several local and national boards, including chair of the board of Self-Help Federal Credit Union, with its multi-state operations and national policy impact. He also is co-chair of the American Business Immigration Coalition, a member of the board of the National Association of Latino Asset Builders, Start Early, the Illinois Justice Project Advisory Board, St. Anthony Hospital Ministry Board, and a member of the leadership team for the United Power for Action and Justice. Mr. Raimundo is a recipient of numerous awards and recognitions, in addition to being a Greater Chicago Leadership Fellow and has mentored many leaders in Chicago and across the nation. It is my distinct pleasure and deep honor to introduce Mr. Raul Raimundo as our honored commencement speaker. Buenas tardes, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to share this celebration of accomplishments with the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. 
I am grateful and honored to share this platform with such distinguished community. I must admit, prior to receiving this invitation, I had limited knowledge of the Chicago School. But as I learned more of your mission, your focus on diversity, social responsibility, and the many accomplishments of your worldwide alumni, I am humbled to have been invited to share my thoughts. First, on behalf of the Resurrection Project, congratulations, felicidades. Your accomplishments would be impressive at any time, but they are especially remarkable considering all that we have been through this past year. As you know, the COVID-19 crisis, police brutality, and other injustices coupled with the imbalanced recovery of the 2008 recession has seriously exposed the inequities in health, housing, education, childcare, wealth, and citizenship. Despite all the challenges you have witnessed and or experienced, you have persevered. Today, you are demonstrating the resolve not just to become an alum, but also to make a difference in our social fabric. I agree with the Chicago School statement, a new normal is not good enough. If a new normal is just going back to pre-pandemic times, then where's the justice in that? I too believe in the world like the Chicago School where homelessness is reduced. Mental health is destigmatized. Everyone has access to quality and integrated healthcare. Healthcare disparities are eliminated. And of course, all healthcare professionals are culturally competent. I believe that coming out of these crises, we need stronger, more vibrant, and healthier individuals and communities everywhere. The next economic and social recovery should leave no one behind. As someone who has been fighting for social and economic justice for multiple decades, I know things won't get resolved overnight. It takes patience and tremendous hard work. As an immigrant from Mexico, I was taught at a very young age the value of service and giving back to communities. In 1990, two years out of college, I co-founded the Resurrection Project in the community that I grew up with, with $30,000 seed capital from area parishes. Our mission was and still is to build relationships and challenge people to act on their faith and values to build a healthier community. Early on, as a community organizer, I understood the power of one-on-one -on -one relationships. Having conducted hundreds of them, I learned how to listen and understand people's self-interest. In other words, what would motivate people and institutions to act? In doing so, we built power, forged partnerships, and built the know-how to act through the self-interest identified. We learned how to address an issue instead of pretending to solve an entire problem. For example, homelessness is a huge problem, but we made it into an issue in our neighborhood. By doing so, we not only helped to preserve the doors open for the homeless shelter, but also acquired the only single room occupancy building in the neighborhood. Today, the Resurrection Project is a multifaceted regional social impact organization that operates with an entrepreneurial spirit and takes action on how it impacts a person's life. Part of the strategic action is converting problems into issues. Like the homelessness example, we recognize early on that we can come up with solutions for issues because issues are winnable and achievable rather than mistakenly believe that we can solve an entire problem. We also work from an asset-based perspective rather than a deficit viewpoint. In other words, we decided to build on the tangible assets and non-tangible assets of the community. The tangible assets included, for example, its geography, its churches, and other institutions. The non-tangible assets, equally important, if not more, are in the culture, the language, the values, and the spirit of the community. I believe that every challenged community in the world has positive attributes to build from. The Resurrection Project and the School of Professional Psychology have a lot in common as two unique social impact organizations. The Chicago School's values of education, innovation, service, and community are in alignment with our core values of passion, character, and commitment. For us, passion is acting with faith, confidence, and conviction to serve, to serve society. Character is operating with respect, professionalism, morals, and ethics. Commitment is driven to go above and beyond a sense of duty and obligation. As you go into your journey to make a difference, you will go into diverse communities to work with people who are eager learners, activists, advocates, as well as people in need. As a future change agent, I look forward to our paths crossing and continuing to make a difference in people's lives. As you know, the crises we have witnessed are not over. As the pandemic wanes, Many will get through it fine, others will struggle to get back on track, and unfortunately, many 
already over 3 million worldwide and 600,000 in the United States have perished. Also, the other inequities exposed during the pandemic, especially in poor communities and communities of color have widened. I believe that the education you have received at the Chicago School has prepared you to be change agents. Our mission must include relating with others and fighting side by side for social and economic justice. We don't live alone. We belong to a community and hence it is not enough just to show empathy for one another. Accountability and responsibility are paramount in our own personal mission. The pandemic has reminded us of that. Moving forward, we need to do things differently to make things better. Let's unify our spirits and our values and that with conviction because creating a new normal society is not good enough. Once again, I congratulate you and wish you much success in taking on issues you seek to address. With you as change agents, I look forward to a better world. Thank you, Mr. Raimundo, for a wonderful speech. And now I will confer the honorary degree. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Chicago School of Professional Psychology, I hereby confer upon you, Mr. Raul Raimundo, the degree of Doctor of Humanities, Honoris Causa, with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Raul Raimundo, I am pleased to present this honorary degree to you. It is my pleasure to announce that we shall now proceed with the presentation of candidates for degrees. Each candidate has been approved by the faculty and the board of trustees to receive the degree indicated on their diploma, subject to the completion of all degree requirements. I would like to invite Dr. Cam Middleman to begin the presentation of candidates. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Um, so the first graduates this evening have actually completed two master's degrees, with a number of credits being nearly the equivalent of a doctoral degree. And this is particularly impressive as they also needed to complete the fieldwork or the fieldwork hours and capstone requirements for both the MS in applied behavior analysis and MA in counseling psychology. Upon graduation, these individuals will be eligible to sit for the exams to become both a board certified behavior analyst and licensed professional counselor. We look forward to seeing their work across both fields. We will now present the dual enrollment MA Counseling Psychology and MS Applied Behavior Analysis degree candidates and spotlight each candidate as her name is read. Graduates, if you have not done so, please turn on your cameras at this time and feel free to unmute yourself to cheer for your fellow graduates after their names are read. Angelica Boknak. <laughs> Manda New Wright. <laughs> Taylor Weber. <laughs> we will now present our candidates for the Masters of Science in Applied Behavior Analysis. I invite Dr. Kai Ward to read their names. Elizabeth Barajas. <laughs> Julianne Cruz. <laughs> Elizabeth Hintz. Kiva Hirsch. <laughs> Esther John. <laughs> Danielle Kennedy. <laughs> Rebecca Kuziak. <laughs> <laughs> Amani Mali <laughs> Ooh. 
Janetta McNeil. Melissa McNichols. <laughs> Chrisella Morrison. Eileen O'Connor. <laughs> Kaylee Roston. <laughs> Natalie Roti. <laughs> Samantha Rupert. <laughs> Tabitha Shine. Erin <laughs> Voci. <laughs> Jennifer Rose Walsh. President Milan, on behalf of the Applied Behavior Analysis and Counseling Psychology faculty of the Chicago School of Professional Psychology, I present to you these candidates who have been approved by the faculty and board of trustees to receive the degree indicated subject to the completion of all requirements and respectfully request that you confer upon them the degrees for which they are qualified. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Chicago School of Professional Psychology and by the State of Illinois, I hereby confer upon you the degrees for which you have qualified with all of the rights, privileges, immunities, and honors thereunto pertaining. And now graduates, I know that this is certainly not as good as being together, and yet there is just something wonderful about seeing all of you, your families, your loved ones, your friends, your cats, your dogs, all of you up close and personal. So I invite all of you now to turn around and show your love through it. Take yourselves off mute and applaud all of the families and friends with you that have helped you get here. Congratulations to all of you. Something <laughs> Just did a one last watch. Is that it? That's it? This is the shortest graduation I've ever been to. <laughs> I mean, there's only 12 people in my class, so. We're not done yet, still more. So now we have a really important part of the program, which is our oath of affirmation and diversity. And I know we, we're gonna keep everyone muted so we can, it won't be too chaotic, but I'm hoping you will say this out loud with me because it's so important. So please raise your right hand and recite with me in unison, the oath of affirmation and diversity, which is now on your screen. And other professionals are with us today may join us and reaffirm their oath. Here we go. I hereby affirm that I shall discharge the responsibilities of my profession in a manner consistent with respect for the dignity and worth of the individual and that I shall strive for the preservation and protection of fundamental human rights. That I shall seek to increase knowledge of human behavior, to increase self-understanding and understanding of others and that I shall use such knowledge for the promotion of human welfare, that I shall seek to embrace the profession's commitment to understand and respect individual and culture differences, that I shall diligently protect the welfare of those who seek my services, and that I shall use my skills only in the furtherance of human welfare and the integrity of the individual and that I shall well and truly recognize the traditions and ethics of my profession, and that I shall subscribe to these traditions and ethics freely and upon my honor. As a representative of the Chicago School community, 
I hereby affirm to actively participate in this learning and professional community by embracing its commitment to understand and respect individual and cultural differences. As such, I will seek to gain knowledge of human difference that I may increase my understanding of self and others. And I will seek to build an environment of mutual respect and inclusion where all are valued. And now I'll turn it over to President Milan. Thank you again, Dr. Martin. Class of 2021, congratulations. One of my proudest moments as president every single year is this one, the opportunity to welcome graduates to the alumni ranks of the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. I'm also pleased to congratulate a once again and welcome once again your loved ones today, all of the friends and family members who have supported you as you pursued your dreams. I imagine that there is a common refrain to be heard in the commencement speeches delivered this year across the country, one of overcoming adversity and rising to challenges rarely seen before. Indeed, it has been a year like no other. The obstacles that you faced along the way, a global pandemic, the effects of a tenuous economy, political divisiveness, social unrest, and more. And yet each and every single one of you persisted. You met hardship and uncertainty head on with perseverance, grit, determination, and values. Values that reflect those that define our unique university and that I know you will take with you as you embark on your postgraduate dreams. Your job is to focus now on the goals that paved your way to today. Many of you are entering the workforce, a workforce that sorely needs the skills that you have honed during your years at the Chicago School. Like never before, there is a laser focus on mental and behavioral health services, on leadership, and on the alignment of leadership and social justice, on accountability, and on the need to rethink the ways in which things have always been done. In so many areas, we need new approaches that can ensure more positive outcomes. So think of the need for mental and behavioral health services, for example. The pandemic is leaving in its wake increasing rates of depression, anxiety, and substance use amongst adults and children alike. People continue to struggle with the effects of prolonged isolation, uncertainty about the virus's future, job loss, or economic hiccups in their lifestyle. And far too many will, will continue to struggle with grief or the long-term health consequences that COVID has wrought. Your knowledge and skills, whether performed in a school, a clinic, a business, a private practice, or other places, will be critical to the ability of individuals, families, and organizations to bounce back. To be sure, we have experienced seismic shifts in our paradigm, shifts that I suspect will endure for quite some time. And we're only beginning to understand the full impact of these changes and the challenges that they truly present. Thousands of women, and women of color in particular, have dropped out of the workforce. What can you do now about that? We've come to rely as never before on technology for everything from routine meetings to healthcare. Is that the direction that we want to continue to move? We have become increasingly aware of the systemic barriers that separate people of color from the services that they need. What can you now do to change that? The sudden shift to virtual learning platforms for both the K through 12 system and the higher education system left way too many students struggling or disengaged. How do you now make up for that? International tensions and domestic political tensions have intensified. How can each of you contribute to easing of these tensions? These are indeed monumental problems and there's more, all of which are too big to be addressed by any one of us. But each of you can play a part. The diploma that you receive today is your ticket to tomorrow. There is not a specialty area taught at the Chicago School 
that does not have a significant role to play in shaping the way we emerge from this very difficult time in our history. Your education has prepared you to face the future with strength, insight, optimism, and most important of all, resilience. So Chicago School alumni, we're depending on you. Everything that happened this year comes with silver linings. Find the possibilities that are buried in the rumble of a tumultuous year and put your TCSPP values and education to work to lead the way to a brighter tomorrow for all of us. Congratulations once again. And closing out, I'm gonna turn you over to Elise Fowler, our Assistant Director of Alumni Relations and Development. Thank you so much, Dr. Nilan. Good everyone. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Elise Bauer. I am the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations and Development at the Chicago School. It is my pleasure to be here with you today to congratulate you on your graduation and to officially welcome you as members of the TCSPP alumni community. While your journey as a student has come to a close, we are hopeful that you will remain engaged as an alum and stay connected to the university in the years to come. In the coming weeks, you will be invited to join our online alumni networking platform, 360 Alumni, where you will have the opportunity to connect with fellow alums, explore networking and professional development events, along with access to a TCSPP alumni job board. We will keep you apprised of ways you can stay engaged with the school through monthly newsletters, which you will start receiving in August. You will learn more about ways in which you can stay involved, whether it's service on our alumni council, mentorship program, and more. We look forward to staying connected and supporting you in your professional growth. Again, congratulations on such a remarkable accomplishment and welcome to the TCSPP alumni community. I will now turn it over to Dr. Whittington Varnish for closing remarks. Thanks, Elise. This concludes our celebration of the Applied Behavior Analysis and Dual Enrollment Class of 2021. You are welcome to stay for a few minutes to chat with your classmates and faculty. Thank you and congratulations again.